Hey everybody, this is Bernie. Oh, hi, I'm Mika. And I have Mika with me. That is me. And we're going to play a game that I keep hearing about, and we did actually did an episode of Master and Apprentice about, uh, but I've never played. It's just not my kind of game, and that's Monster Hunter World. So the thing is, this was never my kind of game either. I tried to get into it. My friend Jared is like super obsessed with it. My friend Carl's super obsessed with it. Oh, that's cute. But as, thank you. As you can see, I have 45 hours in this game, and I'm only Hunter rank 9. Out of what? I, out of 100. Get out of here. Yeah. So I'm going to do quick some, I'm going to do some math on that real quick. 45 into 100 times 9, you would need about 450 hours in order to get to not, 100? You, not you would have to, but I uh, love grinding, Wait, which is a thing that I would never hear. Yeah. Like, I love to just sit there and, like, farm monsters. So I'm not progressing the story because I'm like, man... I want that full armor set, which means I need to kill eight of these monsters. I'm the same way, by the way. And then you, when you go to continue the main storyline, you're way overpowered because oh, you yeah. have like level 80 billion armor. Exactly. I used to do that. It's my problem with like GTA and open world games. Mm -hmm. As soon as I unlock optional missions, I go do all of those. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure in Skyrim I never completed the story until like four years after getting into Skyrim. Really? Because I was like, oh, I can go be a master thief. Wait, I can also be a master wizard. Wait. <laughs> you can do everything. You can do everything. And then it was like, hey, remember that whole uh, saving the world yeah, Master of Dragons yeah. thing? And I was like, meh. Who needs that? Okay, you have a gigantic sword on your back. Yes. So this is the charge. No, the switch axe. Yes. It's the switch blade. And it goes from an axe to a giant sword thing. And it's terrifying. I mean, it's like, that's kind of the same thing, right? Yeah. Well, isn't the axe just a sword with two axe sides? Axe is more choppy. And you can't uh. sever monster parts with it. And then when you change it into the sword, you can sever monster parts with it. And it packs a harder punch. So knowing nothing about this game whatsoever. Yes. Let me, you're a monster hunter. Yes. Your job. Yes. Is to hunt monsters. Correct. And I'm assuming by the size of your weapon that yes. the monsters are bigger than you. Yes. And that you have to cut parts off them. You, so to make cool ass armor like this, you have to uh, get monster parts. So like, I'll show you my, uh, my wish list here. Um, so there are some axes that I want, and if you can see on the right side there, it shows you what I need. Okay. So I need to go find uh, Jarotodus and get their shells, which means you have to kill them right. and skin them, and then you collect pieces. And it's all RNG and drops. Oh, really? So, and there's like the desire meter in this game, so the more you need something, the less likely you are to get it. What? How does it know if you need it? Then why don't you say I'm not even looking for that? Because it just like, knows. play hard to get. I swear, there's like some some complex algorithm bullshit nonsense that we just, know what you're up to. It, it knows that you need it, um, but I don't know. There's just something about this game that it used to be impossible to get into if you didn't have like guidebooks a guru who showed you the way. What's it from? I don't even know. Like, what was it on, like, the Dreamcast or something it's, back in the day? I think it's always been PlayStation and Sony, but it's always been in Japan. Oh, I see. And the Japanese games came over, and they were ported, but they weren't um, really accessible. Monster Hunter World is the first really accessible um, Monster Hunter for the West, and which is why it sold, like, a crap ton of copies, and... Yeah, dude, everybody's talking about this game. Oh, yeah, it's kind of amazing. I'm going to hunt something relatively. Get a Jardusius, whatever it was, <laughs> whatever that thing was. I'm gonna I'm gonna hunt a Toby Kadachi, so I don't have to pay too much attention. So we can we can chat about stuff. What do we chat about? What is, what what do we just we talk chat about, about? Whatever you want whatever, to right. chat about. Well, obviously this is a Japanese game. Yes. And I associate you with <laughs> anime cosplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, you were just at the uh, anime awards. I was. That was so much fun. Um, I think it's kind of weird that I was totally outcast as a kid for liking Sailor Moon and um, being an anime nerd. And I never really got into it hard when I was in elementary school because I was like, oh, I kind of want to be a mainstream kid. And then in middle school, I started hanging out with all the nerd kids, got way back into anime, started going to my first conventions. Um, Do you remember what your first convention was? Yes, Anime Los Angeles, about 2008. Anime Los Angeles, 2008, wow. Anime Los Angeles is now at a convention center. It used to be at the Airport Marriott. It was, yep. a, it was a hotel con, and I remember going, and like I was that kid that, I didn't really know con culture yet, because I was, I was in eighth grade, and I thought I was cool. And arguably, it's changed, too, oh, in the God, last yeah. ten years, yeah. I remember, I thought I was cool for trolling the halls, looking for like anime spin the bottle in eighth grade. Oh, like, really? I was that kind of kid who like had Getting the rave arrested. bracelets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I had like the rave bracelets on, and I wore like 
Naruto cosplay with like mesh, and I was like, I'm a rave kid. I was a dork. I want to. I just want to set the proper expectations at the beginning here. Yeah. I know almost nothing about anime. Okay. Here's the here's the anime that I, I have watched. <laughs> Akira. Okay. Speed Racer. Oh my lord. And Ruby. That's it. That's okay. like a hundred percent of my experience with anime. Okay. I mean, so, I've watched. I've, I shouldn't say that. I've watched like Ghost in the Shell. And stuff okay. Like that. But like Naruto, never seen an episode. Are there like four hundred billion episodes of that show? There are so many. There are guides out there that let you know which episodes you could skip because the filler arcs are painful. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that too. With uh, what's the other one? Is it Dragon Ball or Dragon Wait, Ball, Bleach, uh, One Piece? Those are all kind of. In the vein of, man, this anime goes on for fucking ever. Why is that? Um, you know, no one really knows. I'm not supposed to kill this thing, but it'll take me 45 seconds to kill the other monster, so I just want to show you Get him. how it goes here. Is this a Gerardusaurus? No, this is a Kulayaku. He's kind of this stupid bird that loves to... Yeah, he's stupid. Yeah, he's very stupid. Oh, you just get pissed him off now. Eh, it's fine. Look at that sword. That's ridiculous. And then when you change it into... A sword. Oh wow, he punched me in the face. Hold on. I see your health is at the top. I don't yes. know what the yellow bar is. The yellow is your stand. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. So it's like you can just like stand half a mile away and hit that thing. Exactly. Um, I also like it because my girl is tiny and the sword is like two times the size of her. Um, Do you make characters that look like you? Yeah. I used to not. I used to always make like um, I was really obsessed with making bright blue-eyed, dark-haired, light-skinned characters. I don't know why, but I love Bright, blue-eyed, light-skinned characters. It's because that was the first, like, the first girl crush I ever had was um, uh, Jordana Brewster. Um, and she doesn't have blue eyes, but she has, like, that dark hair, like, front-banged, yeah. like, strong-jawed look. So I always made characters that kind of, like, looked like Jordana Brewster. And then just recently, I started making characters that look like me. Do you know, Matt, the first movie he ever worked on was, I believe, Jordana Brewster was in that. Was it Debs? No. Damn it. The faculty. Oh. She was in the faculty, right? Uh, I think so. I'm gonna I'm look not it sure. up. So if not, I'm gonna cut it and no one will even know. <laughs> Debs was my um absolute like bisexual awakening. I saw Jordana Brewster date a girl and I was like, oh my god. I don't know if I'm straight. But yes, anime. I don't know. Um My first girl crush, by the way, for keeping score was yes. Marsha Brady. Really? Yeah. That's I'm adorable. Old. I'm old as hell. <laughs> I wouldn't consider Let me see. that old. We're... What? It's like the 70s, dude. That's pretty okay, old at this that's point. that's fair. That's I, pretty old. Let me see. Where, where in the world is this? But one of the things that's like, when you talk about like building characters mm -hmm. that look like yourself. Right. Is something that I've, I've learned from you. And I learned it, I, I don't know if you remember, probably won't even, you won't even remember, maybe you will, you know, <laughs> your reaction to it. But I remember um, when the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer came out. Right. And oh, you had yeah. this incredible <laughs> reaction to what we thought at the time was the Mary Jane character. Uh, uh, right. Well, if, she was. Uh, she still ended up being the love interest. She was the love interest, but that's why we assumed that it was Mary Jane. Right. Not okay, to spoil right. anything that takes place in Spider-Man Homecoming, but go see the movie for God's sake. Yeah. If you haven't seen Spider-Man Homecoming, my God. I mean, you were so you were so excited about that trailer. I remember because you were just saying. Uh, here's someone that looks like me mm -hmm. that is an object of affection, mm -hmm. and you just hadn't experienced that before. Unless it's a Tyler Perry film, <laughs> and it's like it was uh, it was an object of affection. Or specifically, like, it, it's almost like as Tyler Perry, and then also it's like unless that's what the movie's about too, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. This is just part of the story, and here's someone who's an object of, of affection. Maybe I, object isn't the right word, but well, you know what I mean. I always say, whenever people say, why do you, why are you into acting? Why are you into social media? Why are you into gaming, cosplay, whatever? I always say it's because something always stuck out to me when I was a kid. Um, my parents, because I, I was a nerd, I had posters on my wall. Mm -hmm. K-pop, anime, like Jonas Brothers. I was such a big Jonas Brothers fan, oh my goodness. Um, but it was never anyone that looked like me. Never any dark-skinned characters ever. Ah, there's the asshole I have to kill. Uh, oh, he's fighting the other dude. So you wait out the fight and let them pick yeah, up the Yeah, sometimes it's it's fun to watch. Oh, he's a pussy. All right, well. Get him. Come here. Come here, dude. Five seconds. I'm timing you. So <laughs> take. Looks like a basilisk. He is uh, an electric asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Join the club. Yeah. He's, he's actually not quite fun to fight. It's probably going to take me a little bit. Um, but yeah, so I, I never really had an idol to look up to or someone in my interest, oh, come back here, you piece of shit, that looked like me. And I 
want to be that voice, not voice, I don't speak for anybody, I'm not the fucking Lorax, um, but I want to just be able to be there, you know, and be like, hey, I'm a girl, I'm black, I like nerdy things, it's not, you know, usually thought of, like, that's kind of the quote-unquote taboo thing, it's always like, oh, you're, you're black and like anime, I've never heard of that before, and it's like, no, no, we're out there, you know, you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta do it, it's like, and it was really cool to see a dark-skinned love interest for a white superhero when that's never really happened before. Or and just in, in general, like, it's a superhero, right? Yeah. I mean, just like that. It's And for me, it's been, it, it, the last year has been really incredible because I had that experience with you and that kind of set, set off or was the first in a chain of events because then Wonder Woman came out. And I was a person who was, you know, I thought I was extremely progressive. Mm -hmm. I, had, I didn't really think about uh, issues of representation because... Mm -hmm. I mean, not only was everybody on a movie poster, there's dudes in every movie poster, there's always <laughs> white dudes in every movie poster. Right. And I'm not even saying they had to be all white dudes. No. Uh, but it was, you know, I, I could definitely find someone who looked like me. That right. I could identify with, you know? Unless it may I was watching a film from another country or something. Right. Like then that. it's like, oh, man, I'm not anyway. It's literally called a foreign film. Right. right. Yeah. And, uh, and so then after that experience with you, um, shortly after that, Wonder Woman came out. And then I got to watch... Uh, all of these women that I really admire, who I consider to be like very, very emotionally strong, capable women, and they were just overwhelmed oh, by yeah. the fact that there was a movie that had a female superhero. And uh, then after that, of course, Black Panther now is oh. like the biggest Marvel movie ever, you know, and just watching the way people, it's just, it's, it's amazing to watch people have that experience for the first time. It is, and I, I saw a tweet that you retweeted that I uh, heavily, identified with it was like four black dudes in front of the poster being like is this what y'all feel like every day yeah they're just so happy yeah you know? it's like they're and that that's infectious how happy they are oh because we we've, we've never had that unless it's a tyler perry film mm -hmm. or you know uh i don't like to use the term pandering because it has a negative connotation but it is kind of like the it's like bet there's a black entertainment network because there wasn't enough representation you know, there's Tyler Perry films because there's not enough representation. Instead of filling a void, it's just there. Mm -hmm. And that's what's super cool about Black Panther is that it's like, I, I kid you not, like, Jerry can vouch for this. I sobbed, like, the entire film. The second we descended into Wakanda, I was in tears. I heard the talking drums and the African music, and I saw just these strong black people and happy and cool and fighting and it was just like a screen full of me and I was like this exists and it's Marvel and it was like one of the most amazing experiences of my life. I love that tweet too because those guys are just like they just putting their hands on the poster. Like, yeah. It's like almost like this is a real thing you know and it's just like I said it's just been amazing to watch people experience that. It's like I want, I want to see everybody experience it now. Oh you know? yeah and it, it also gives because I used to be not ashamed of, of my heritage or my culture but I never really embraced it. But um, after going to Black Panther, I went in a, a dashiki dress and seeing all these tribal prints and African colors and all of that, I'm like, hell, I'll wear more dashiki outfits out. Like, I'll, I'll embrace my culture a lot more. I'm planning a uh, heritage trip with my girlfriend to go back to Egypt. Oh, no kidding. And to possibly check out other parts of Africa. Egypt first, because that's mostly what I am. But um, Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm mostly Egyptian. Um, and then on my dad's side, it's like, Africa, just like he he comes from a long line of of slaves and such, which is funny because Kunta Kinte. Right, but, <laughs> really, yeah. Yeah, ah, uh, there we go. This is my favorite part. You can mount a monster. You got his tail. And stab, and then you can jump up to his back, and then if you are really sneaky, you That's can jump up cool. to his face. And now he is down on the ground, and you can just wail into him. Slice him up. Gonna try and. Ooh, he's mad. There he goes. Yeah, this is a fun game. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just there's just a lot of cool, a lot of cool stuff has happened this year. I feel like for things that I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. Um, and I'm excited to see where it goes from now. Cause like, Black Panther's a huge success. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe that means that, you know, there can be more. Black-led films. Well, I also think there was this myth that that if they had an all-black cast, the movie wouldn't sell as well. Right. And that has definitely disproven that. 
I mean, it also helps they made a just a great fucking movie. You yeah. Know? Ar- arguably, I think the best villain. And oh. villain isn't even the right word. I don't think antagonist. Anta- yeah. Yeah. In, in all of in any Marvel movie, but just such a great villain. I called my dad after I saw it because I saw it first, and then he saw it. Um, and after he saw it, he was like, "So, other than the whole like killing people thing, did you agree with Killmonger?" And I was like, "I mean." If Wakanda was real and they didn't help us out in the whole civil rights thing, I'd be kind of pissed too. Or don't help anybody, right? Yeah, I mean, anybody. Yeah. And I mean, like, the. Uh, should I. A spoiler alert? I don't know when this is coming out. Because there's a line that I really loved in the I movie. I think at this point, if people have seen Black. But spoiler alert, we're going to say something about Black Panther. Yeah, um, the line in the movie just throw me in the ocean with the ancestors that jumped. Mm hmm. Rather than live as a slave. Yeah. Yeah. I. Audibly, like I was a, I, I sobbed, like I had to be consoled because that is, that's a feeling that I can, I can probably, wholeheartedly say a lot of people in this generation have felt, mm-hmm. like, just like the absolute fuck it then, you know, um, and it's just, it's, I don't know, it's just so cool to have your thoughts, articulated by Michael B. Jordan in a Marvel film. In a Marvel film, yeah, like, yep. It was really cool, um, and. You know, 200 million other people have seen it, it seems like. Exactly. So what did he do? It died and ran away? Uh, oh. No, he, he was trying to rest, but I found him, and I said, fuck you. Because he left a glowing, glittering trail. <laughs> yeah. I said, it's your first mistake, buddy. Yeah, how... Ooh. But well, that was not good. So he... Uh, so what's your little gremlin? His name is Bowie. Well, I named him Bowie. He's uh-huh. a palico. Get it? Because he's a cat, and Got he's it. your pal. Oh. Is that... Palico. You didn't name him palico. That's their thing? Yeah, they... they and he always does the cat rare puns. Japanese pun. And Interesting. He always says meowster instead of master, and he and, and they make cat puns all the time, and it's really cute. They're like, that was meantastic, and I was like, yeah, it is. Well, it's, I said that, but is punning a big part of Japanese culture? I don't associate. Kind I, of. Yeah. Depends. Like. I wish better for them. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you didn't. Punch, puns are not my particular. Type of humor. So do we get to see the chop chop? We yes. cut them up. Yes. Oh, really? It's gonna be so gross. I it's not. See. I still want to see it. It is not gross at all. It is completely censored. Oh, you is just it really? stab one place. You can kind of see it. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. So is this one of those things where it's like you see the same short little animations a thousand times yep. when you're grinding? Oh God, yeah. I can't see that. There we go. Yep. There's my carving. I listen. All <laughs> I'm hoping for. If there's one feature that they add into Red Dead Redemption Two, all I want them to do is I can be able to skip. Like the skinning animations. And I stuff 100% like that. agree. That's how I felt in Assassin's Creed when, what was it, uh, Black Flag, where you had to skin animals and stuff. Yep. And it was just like the stab and the cut to black. And then five seconds later, it would fade in. And I'm like, you could have. Just, yeah. Oh, and then occasionally, I don't know if it was Red Dead or if it was, I think it was Black Flag, if you killed something in a way that like fell up against a wall or something, right. it would just skin it and it wouldn't do the animation. Like, yep. do that every time do or give me the option. Every time. I, I would love to skip animations and stuff. Um, well, so I want to go back to what we were talking about before, if you're okay with that. Because one of the things uh, I would say is, like, you know, people had trepidation saying, oh, if we have an all-black cast, it won't perform as well. Uh-huh. And, you know, and if there's one thing that Hollywood is, it's they're risk-adverse. They'll do whatever's safest, you know? Right. And it's nice to see something like a big franchise like Marvel, uh, you know, taking those risks and mm-hmm. being rewarded for it. Mm-hmm. But you also, I, I think, like, you have coming into Rooster Teeth, Mm -hmm. which at the time when you came in had a predominantly, especially you were an achievement hunter, in a mostly male, mostly white audience, Mm -hmm. I think you ran into a lot of that, but I feel like you didn't shy away from it. You leaned into it. Uh, I would say half and half. Yeah. Uh, I would say that there's a lot of stuff that I've had to do to protect myself because as much as I love to, like, be that really positive nothing gets to me person on Twitter. Like, I'm a very fragile human being Mm -hmm. with a lot of, I mean, I talk about it often, I'm not very shut, like, I'm not, I like to be a mental health advocate. Like, I have a lot of diagnosed mental health issues that I can't put myself in the line of fire as often as I would like to. Um, I do know that a little bit with what I do and what I wanna do, I, because I wanna be a positive representation for not just people of color, not just women, but everybody who I feel like needs a voice, I know I'm gonna have to follow my sword. I know that I'm gonna have to be a lightning rod of people who don't like what I have to say, of people who don't want change. And I think that just with people that, like I have a lot of loved ones, I have. It's hard to bear the brunt of it. Oh, 
it's and don't you, do incredibly you feel like, difficult. Do you feel like you have a responsibility to do it? I feel like I have a 100% responsibility to do it because if I'm not going to, who is? I can't just say, oh, well, the next black girl who loves anime is going to do it. I can't mm -hmm. just leave. If I have the choice and the opportunity to, I feel like I have an obligation if I have the strength that day because it's a disservice to past Mika who had no one to look up to if I don't. And see, this is what I mean by leaning in. Yeah. Because we've, you and I have talked about this before too, and we have had this discussion where I'm saying, is it your responsibility? You know, it's still your career, mm -hmm. you know, and your path, and mm -hmm. it's like, do you have to take on the burden of everybody else, else along with it? And you, your answer is, 100%. I feel like I do. I feel, and, and that's not the answer for everybody. A lot of people will be like, you know what, I didn't sign up for this, I bow out. But for me personally, because I want to dedicate my life to being a positive role model for people who need them mm -hmm. and for people who want what? them and for people that just want this world to be a better place, which I want this world to be. I'm not going to sit down just because some people are threatening me, shouting things that I would rather not hear, you know? Like, it'll happen. It's gonna happen. It was gonna happen regardless. It's just a little bit louder because I put myself out there. Well, you know, one of the things I dealt with, and I don't want to compare these two things because they're far, far different, but I think <laughs> there's a common thread emotionally between them. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I dealt with, especially towards the end of the vlog, were people who felt that the things I was doing were unrelatable, you know? Right. And that, that I get that sometimes on the podcast too, that like the problems that I have or whatever mm -hmm. are unrelatable. And I agree, Are you know, bitching about the minutia of life is sometimes it's like everyone's got little problems. I hate when people complain and make their customer service issues public on Twitter. You know, right. I'm always like, hey, you're an adult, take care of that. Right. But you know, on a podcast, we're talking about things and talking about our lives. Uh -huh. Sometimes we talk about the minutia of that. Right. But a common thing I heard, like especially towards the end of the vlog, is that, uh, Bernie's not relatable anymore, specifically because of money, mm -hmm. which is totally different than the, than the experience. But I think that thread, that emotional thread of relatability mm -hmm. is why sometimes people have a negative reaction as well. Yeah. But why do you, and it's, but I've, I've, I've heard it so often. I mean, it's not all the time. It's one of those things where you read comments and you tend to notice the negative ones mm -hmm. and internalize them and kind of question yourself mm -hmm. a little bit. But I did wonder, it's like, why does this relatability thing come up and how important is that? Like. I do wonder why would you want to watch content all the time that's relatable and never see anything that's not relatable. I mean, going back to even the representation thing, you didn't even have access to things that were relatable right. for, for most of your life. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is that I and this this is going to be one of those, you know, it's it's very easy to push back about against what I'm about to say and shut down, but when you're used to relating to everything pushing against the norm is scary. I get that. Mm -hmm. I get that going outside the box is frightening. I get that hearing things sometimes that you didn't have to think about before is frightening. Like a lot of what I always hear when I mention like such and such is hard. They're like, why do I have to care? Yeah. Like you Technically you don't. You don't have to give a fuck about racism or sexism if you don't have to give a fuck about it. Yeah. That is very true. However, wouldn't you like to give a fuck about other people? Mm -hmm. Like, I understand sometimes you can't relate. I can't relate to a lot of things either. But And it's one of those things, why is that why is that such an important factor? Like for instance, I'm a forty five year old dude. Right. Who has had a job right. every day since I was nineteen. Right. And, and more importantly, Rooster Teeth was a company I had for fifteen years approximately. Right. That, you know, people watched on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I, I would I wouldn't expect that my life would be 100% relatable to a 19-year-old who's oh, no. in their first year in college. Yeah. Like, they they shouldn't necessarily relate to me. That's no. not a bad thing. But there are things that you will... That's the thing. is like, you have to find the relatability in people. Like, I have a very unrelatable upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that I... Oh, Oh, there you are. Hi, asshole. He flies? Yes. That is the that is the dude I have to go fight. You discovered a Raytheon. Yep. Is that a Raytheon? Yep. Uh, I use my powers of deduction. <laughs> That's a Raytheon. Yes, it is. And he is a very mean motherfucker. He's... Oh, all right. That's you got cool. an arrow? Shoot an arrow. Throw that sword. I just just chuck it. I'm actually going to try and fight him in a bigger Turn your plane. sword into an arrow and um, fire it. But I, I'm very, very lucky to have experienced the crazy shit that I did as a kid, you know? Like, yeah. But however, I mean, I'm, this is not like lots of my personal life. 
I there are only about five people on this planet that know about the shit that I've gone through and the struggles that I've grown up with. And that's not my responsibility to broadcast it to people that have something to say to me. It's mm-hmm. not my responsibility to justify my past to my present. No, I get and, it. Yeah. And just because I may not be relatable on some points doesn't mean that I'm not relatable on others. You know, and I feel like that's that's something with everything. It's like there's, I don't know, I've... What, how did I lose him? I don't know. I think you took a like a right turn. You should have taken a left. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Oh, what's that mean? Uh, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Oh, you gonna look some stuff up on the web? I nope. think I just saw him. Is yeah, you know he's up there. Yeah. But if I'm trying to open up my map, but I don't know why that's bound to not my map. There we go. There we go. Um, there we go. Now my little buggies are gonna lead me right to him. Oh, I had nothing to do with that. I didn't sabotage you in any no, way. No, yes, you did. Absolutely. How dare you? I'm gonna look stupid. This everybody. is your profile. Um, but de- dealing with a lot of the negativity that I've dealt with working here for almost two years, um, I've learned that there's humanity in everybody. There's relatability in everybody. That doesn't mean that you have to get along with everybody. There's people that I definitely detest in mm-hmm. this world and that detest me, and that is fine. Um, I just think that before we go pitchforking and screaming and, and yelling, we should just try more. Well, yeah, let, I don't know. let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So let's yeah. say... Try to re- trying to relate uh, to someone yeah. talking to you. Let's talk about that 19-year-old white dude who's yeah. in his first year in college. Right. And he watches videos about video games yep. to just have fun and not think about anything. Right. How do you want a person like that mm-hmm. to react to you? What do you want them to take away from that conversation? Um, look, my dude, I'm sorry that in the one episode of the thing that you usually come for an escape uh, got real for a second, but I, you know, I, I also use funny things and like, like I watch the game Grumps religiously. They are my <laughs> escapism. Yeah. But Dan, uh, in one episode that really resonated with me because I feel the same of uh, Wind Waker that they played, he talked heavily about being medicated and it was like a 30 minute discussion about his anxiety and depression and medication. And it got real on an episode of Game Grumps which is usually talking about dicks. Yeah. And it didn't make me angry. It made me think, Dan's a person. Dan is not just, a- stop leaving you piece of shit um dan is not just a dancing monkey for my amusement he is a person and a human being and yes i may come to him for my escapism but that doesn't mean that he is escapism he's I mean, a person gabe and Tycho did the same thing from penny arcade way back mm-hmm. in the day i mean it was like they were the hub of essentially internet gaming nerd culture you right. know everyone every monday Wednesday, friday would go there to read the comic and then there was a blog as well and they went and depth and in their uh the reality series that they, they, they went in depth over mental illness and medication everything i was i was shocked by that oh, no. i was shocked by that they would put themselves out there in such a way right but i didn't, I didn't have a visceral reaction of going like oh what was you you know in your medical condition or whatever you know i didn't i didn't carry that away you know you right. know but i guess i guess too in the same sense um i think there's i think what a lot of people deal with mm-hmm. and as a white dude uh a lot of a lot of dudes who, especially now, younger people, you know, millennials, have an uphill battle to say the least, you know, and so I think, and I'm totally projecting here, I think there's a lot of younger white people, especially mm-hmm. males, mm-hmm. who hear that the problems in the world were were created by them, right. and they're like, dude, I don't, whatever you're saying, this I I'm supposed to have, I don't have it, I don't have like this awesome incredible life. You know, and that and they have that reaction to it. Right. Sorry, this trail keeps jerking me about, and I know we're talking <laughs> about something important right now, but I'm about to start fucking raging right now. If anybody's watching is like, man, she sucks. Like, no, you're watching this trail disappear in front of my goddamn motherfucking eyes. <laughs> Continue. By the way, I just want to point out, too. Yeah? One of the things about game time, and I talked to you about this beforehand, yeah? and uh, I think oh. you're going to be one of the first episodes in the new one, yeah? is I like to talk about stuff that's not, Ooh. like, just talking about the video game and cracking jokes and stuff like that. Talking right. to people about their lives. Right. Um, but one of the things about it as an interview show is we play a video game mm-hmm. and you're playing. I'm right. not. <laughs> and it's usually a one player game. And the whole purpose of the show is so that people kind of get distracted and they don't think about their answers too much. <laughs> they just say what's on their mind. <laughs> if you keep moving, I swear to God. Yes. Well, would he, if he moves, does the trail move with him? Yep. Because it's like, here's the fastest way to get to him. But he's a flying piece of motherfucking shit. And he keeps, you know what? If he keeps moving, I'm just going to change what monster I'm fighting because, like, I. Get a net. I hate him. 
Or just, so just the first flying monster that you've encountered? No, I've killed him before, but I've never had this issue before. He usually sits down and, like, takes a nap for a hot second. Going in a Look at him. Look at him. See, there he goes in the bottom corner. Oh, is that where he is? He just keeps moving across the map. And he's like, oh, I don't feel like being here anymore. Fuck you. So I just want to yes. point out, early on you said how much you like the grind. I just want to point that out. See, I hate myself, Bernie. This is something <laughs> that you're quickly going to learn about me in this game time. Is Okay, I see. Okay. Okay. <gasps> That's two of them. Okay. No, those are those are little flying wyverns. There you are. Oh, there you are. There he Fucking is. fight me. 1v1 me, bitch. <laughs> God, you piece of ass. What are you looking for on this dude? A shell or a wing or something? Uh, I paralyzed myself. Uh, no, I'm just fighting him because uh, I can. And I really like his armor set. So pretty much everything on him. Um, but yes, you were saying uh, uh, this isn't me. Yeah, well, they're saying, saying like, you, when, especially when you talk about things like privilege and things like that. Right. There's a lot of... There's a lot of Younger people, it's like, I don't have anything. I don't have this incredible power to make things happen. I can't even get a job myself. You know what I mean? Right. And which I get. Like that, it's, and I think that that's what's, um, you have to establish, like, when no one's coming at you personally, you know, Monster Slayer 47 on the internet, I'm not talking about you in general. It's the royal you, like the royal we. Mm -hmm. But I also don't want to blame, I'm not... Look, I'm not here to blame. I'm not here to be angry. I'm not here to pick fights. I'm just here to literally try and live my life and make people happy. That's honestly what I want to do with my life, is just make people happy and make people feel safe. And um, as someone who just doesn't often feel safe, I want to make the opportunity that everyone can. Okay, talk to me about that, because there's yep. a big age difference between you and I as well. Yep. Talk to me about the feeling safe thing, because this is something I don't usually relate to very much with younger generations is this idea of always feeling at ease and safe. Right. Um, um, if I may, that the, the importance of emotions over everything else. And I don't mean else. safe space. I don't mean okay. safe, like, everything is fluffy in my little safe room. I literally mean just like, the f Ah, oh God, it just, it always just. Is it feeling valued? I mean, that's my own personal nonsense. Got it. Um, it's, it's literally just like physically sometimes, you know? Uh -huh. Like, yeah, sure. depending on where you go. Um, like with the Me Too movement, like I never sh specifically shared my story, but like, there, as you know, there is a time that I felt and was very unsafe because of sexual assault. And it's like, it's just shit like that. You Which know? That, that I totally get. I mean, even older generations have different ways of expressing right. that. Like and older generations like, will say, well, at least you have your health. Right. And it's like, because we realize there are certain things that if you don't have them in life, right. It, like, if you don't feel physically safe, nothing else matters. And then remember... Because it's the, it overrides everything else. I'll never forget, because I was in Japan when it happened, when um, the KKK rallies were happening. And I got a lot of people apologizing to me on Twitter, saying, Oh, remember when I made fun of you for saying you don't feel safe being black walking around? I get it. And I'm like, mm hmm Yep. Now you see. Like, no, I'm not saying that I'm going to walk outside and someone's going to shoot me in the face, but I'm saying that there's a larger possibility... Um, not larger, I'm guessing, because then people are going to start tweeting at me statistics. Um, <laughs> well, oh, no, I, that happened. Like, every time it's like, uh, excuse me, Mika, but black women are the least killed in the world, so you're actually silly for ever worrying about that? It's like, okay, thank you. I really appreciate it. But it's like, there's some things that you just can never, I can never know what it feels like to be a white dude. That's true. Yeah. Just like white dudes will never know what it feels like to be a black woman. 100% correct. There yeah. are things that you can't explain because you can't explain them. And that's why, that's, that is, that I feel is my job is to try and lessen the gap of understanding. That's all I wanna do, is I just wanna ex show that we're literally people. We are the same people. I like anime, you like anime. I'm hunting a monster, you're hunting a monster. There's no reason to hate because of a skin color or a gender. I, you know, I, I like the Naruto's as much as you can like the Naruto's. I read the books and watch the movies and do the things. Well, I do feel compelled when you're saying that then to play devil's advocate, which I normally hate playing devil's advocate, <laughs> but I know there's people thinking that, okay, if that's the case and it doesn't matter, then why why do we have to talk about it? Why we have to talk it about it because it's not the case. That's why we have to talk about it. Because not everybody believes that. If everybody in the world went along their business, like, I am you, you are me, fuck it, then we mm -hmm. would not be having this conversation. But because, that's not the way the world works. But that's works. not the way the fucking world works. And you're talking about, you, in, if I may, you're talking about systemically here, too. Yes. I mean, it's yes. like there's things that we don't even see yes. that's just not the way the world works. Yes. And um, unless we talk about them, they just stay in the system. Exactly. Um, like, 
it's like I I always uh, oh fuck uh, oh fuck well me. maybe they'll fight each other oh yep, yep I'm leaving I'm leaving I'm I'm out oh I'm knocked over okay please stop get half your health leave me alone oh Jesus Christ fight your buddy there fight your buddy not me oh I'm trapped oh no, no you got this you got this you got this Jesus Christ stop it. <laughs> this is the worst thing that ever happened to me you're by the way your <laughs> gremlin does nothing oh no he does a lot does he he's the only reason I'm alive is because he keeps putting down health packs and he fights um, oh my fucking god, this is the worst. Literally leave me alone, fight each other. Thank you, thank you. I'm not here, I'm not here, you don't see me. I'm behind a tree, he sees me. Jesus Christ. You got this, you got this. I'm gonna just, mm. Okay, yep, nope, not in the bush. No, I promise you I'm not in this bush. I am so not here. So I just say, I've always yes. felt a certain level of responsibility for what was... Oh, he found me! Arguably a negative experience for you appearing on Off Topic. Oh, particular. it was the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my life. I was going to use the word disastrous, but um, I didn't want to, it's, like, assume. It actually, uh, I don't really care talking about it now because I've passed it in my life, but it actually made me suicidal. Really? It. Uh, the only reason I'm here to this day is because I vomited up a bottle of NyQuil. Um... Really? Yep. I didn't know about that. Oh God, no. Uh, Every time I talk to you, I find something something new. Uh, Bernie, my life it's has, complex. It's very complex. Like Layered. I said, I Layered. love being that perky. Here I am, anime girl with pigtails on Twitter. But who oh boy, am I so happy that I finally found my girlfriend? Because there is no telling if I would be here today. Because she has absolutely turned my life around and, and you, made you, me happy to live. And you attribute that to the reaction from your appearance on Off Topic? Oh, uh, literally a hundred percent. Because I had the fucking audacity to speak my mind and say things that I felt uh, it was the worst thing ever. And, I, and you know what? I realized that I was too new. Uh, people didn't know who I was. People didn't really know what I was about, what I stood for, who I was as a person. I was still very under the guise of, you're only here because of your dad. I, it, that was very fresh. A lot of things were very fresh that... I did not, it, it was too early for me to make my point of view known. Like now, whenever I speak up about racism or sexism, it's always, yes, queen, fight for those people, like fight for it. But back then it was not because- well, I think our audience has changed too. Aren't those, aren't those two voices now present? I mean, those other voices still exist, right? Yes. I just think that I've established myself as a person more mm -hmm. and myself as a, as a personality more. I've, I have more of a stance. I have more of a backbone. Um, and I it's think- a lot, It's a lot to go through to get to get that wisdom and experience though. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's a, and, it's a lot to go through. And what I said remains the same. And like I said, after all these horrible things started happening in the world, a lot of people came forward and they're like, oh shit, that thing that you said that I didn't believe you was real. And I'm like, uh-huh. And do, so does, let me ask you that. Does that make it worth it? Because you obviously go through a lot to talk about this. And it does a small group of people coming up and saying thanks. Does that matter from the cacophony of voices that you hear that are just saying so, stop, stop, stop? To me, what matters more than the people who admit that they were wrong are the people who tell me that I've helped. The people that tell me that you existing on this channel makes me feel like... I have a voice, which is why I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. When my goal is fulfilled, like I've gotten so many people saying, I've realized that I'm bi because of you. I've realized that I'm ace, pan, any, anything on the spectrum. You know, I, this, you're the first person I've ever seen who's black who likes video games like me on a public forum. That is worth it. That asshole who called me the N-word and sent me death threats saying he's sorry, whatever. Like, cool, I'm glad you changed your mind, but man, that was fucked up. Yeah. Um, but it, that's not as satisfying as someone, as what I like to call past Mika. Past Mika having current Mika. That's why I do this. So when those past Mikas say, thank you for showing me that I'm valid, I'm like, there we go. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. We, we, I mean, I think we talked about some of that on the, uh, on the, the episode as well. We are talking about like, you know, your upbringing and it's, it's so easy to look at someone else's life. Um, and I think we see it often mostly expressed through dating, 
Like, there'll be someone say, like, they'll see someone with someone that they admire, and they're like, uh -huh. well, that person only got that other person because they're rich, or because they're good-looking, or, you know, like because said, they dress provocatively. They always, they always pick out some reason that's unfair why they got what they what they want, or, you know, an unfair advantage that they have right. in life. So people are used to doing that. So it's like, and, I think, and like I said, people, I don't have, I'm not, I'm, like, I will not and refuse to divulge my fucking childhood and what I've gone through in my life just because people say, oh, Mika's dad is famous, she must have had a perfect life. I'm not gonna sit there and say this X, Y, Z, and then A through Z and X, Y, Z again are the reasons sure. why you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Sure. Because that's not my job. Also, by the way, if that were true, why is my life perfect right now? Right. Because your life is not perfect, right? No one's life is perfect. No one's we life is all perfect. have struggles. It's, it's, I don't know, I just, and it's the people like that that it actually happened to me um, in elementary school. A lot of kids decided to gang up and hate me because they thought I had a perfect life. And it was like the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "This, you are elementary school kids. Like, what does that even mean? Yeah, right. Um, and it's... It seems, I, can I, that seems weird for LA too. You know what I mean? I guess maybe It also not. seems weird for the school that I went to. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was, it was an experience, and it, Oh god, the fucking other dragon's back. Please leave me alone. I don't want to fight you. There's two, okay. two dudes on patrol right there uh, for a stroll. I'm just going to pretend What does that red I'm glitter mean? Like... What's the blue purple stuff? <laughs> the, the, purple, the, purple, the red glitter means that I'm being attacked, and the purple stuff is just glowy stuff that you can shoot at other things to make them glow. I would totally do that. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I just I feel like get to know a person. And then if you hate them then, hate them all you want. But... That's why I really try not to make assumptions about anybody, because I've had so many assumptions made about me. You know, I gotta say, I gotta say, yeah. that the millennials and the baby boomers go at it toe to toe yeah. all the time. It's like, you know, you know, and you, I mean, we know all the buzzwords, right. like participation trophies. You right, know. right. Yeah, and and you know the baby boomers having everything and not passing anything along to the millennials. Right. I'm in the generation right between, so it's interesting you always watch it go back and forth. But you guys, those two generations are actually so similar, and I consider both of your generations to be almost this have this burden of transition, of incredible time of transition. Oh yeah. Whereas like the, I mean, civil rights for the baby boomers, you know, I mean the baby boomers were the hippies for God's sake. Right. You know, or some of them. Were. Um, and now I think the millennials is this. I think because of the internet, there's there's more now analysis of how we interact with each other culturally, mm -hmm. you know? And there's things like talks of like safe space, talks of things like privilege, and these are things that need to be talked about, but they're just, it's this burden of this generation, I think, to, mm -hmm. to be the people that have to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm at this point where I've, oh, you ass! Um, I've, gotten past the off-topic hump. Have you? Okay, well, gotten past as in... You mean you I yourself, don't... or you mean the audience just stopped? Oh, no, no, the... no, 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 no. There okay. will always be dicks, there will always be assholes, there will always be people shouting slurs at me. That's never gonna stop until I die. Although, to be fair, I swear someone will probably show up at my funeral to try and shame me. Oh my god, the other dragon is back! Why? 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 Why, why, why? Leave me alone, you... Monsters. Assign Bowie to take it out. Okay, there That's he goes. There he goes. Okay, he's distracting him. Thank you. Don't run. Thank you, my cat. There we go. I love you. Um, oh, he lost his tail. Oh, yeah, I cut it off. Uh, That's a little aggressive. But I, you know, I've, I've, like I said, I've gotten over that hump of, like, just pure self-hatred. Like, this is all my fault. Internally, I you've did, got over it. Yes, yeah. I've done something wrong. And I was like, actually, no. I did something right gotta wait for the rest of the world to catch up. What was the thought? Did you think you blew an opportunity? No. Okay. I thought, you know, I spoke out of turn. I I did, mm. I didn't, because if if we all go back and watch and, and, and look correctly, I beg a million times to stop talking. I say, I shouldn't be talking about this. I'm so sorry. A Most million way. times. Yeah, it's one of the things when I, when I think back to that, that appearance too, is like, I remember Ryan and I, uh, where I think we're on either side of you, mm -hmm. and it's, it's like, I felt very conscious as a middle-aged white dude, of just like, I can't tell her to not talk about this stuff, you but, know what I mean? And I, and it wasn't even just like not, and I said a million times I should stop, and then I heard, no, 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 I want to hear what you have to say, and I was like, 
okay? And then there was also alcohol in me. So it was like people asking me to share how I felt while I was drinking. Yeah, and there's something to that too. Uh, There's times, I remember on free play, where Meg would catch hell uh, for saying something, or on a there was on a on a, a glitch please before oh, back, I remember back, back that. when it was yeah. the patch, and she caught hell for saying something. I think it was the Jeff Gersman thing. Mm-hmm. And if you go back and watch it, she didn't say it. Yep. Like everyone else around her said it. Yep. And it wasn't Meg, but she's on screen, so they're like, but oh. But she's the easiest she's, target. Yeah, I thought that was really an interesting dynamic. And that is easy for me to use the word interesting. But it's like if you go back and look, I a million times because I was like, man. Was I really that drunk that I don't remember being an asshole and just keep talking? And I was like, I asked to stop talking. Mm-hmm. I said, I, I'm so sorry for bringing down the mood. I should stop talking about this multiple times. And then we'd go on and talk about what? And then we just Monster kept talking hunting? about it. <laughs> well, well, you know what I mean? It's like, but. Well, what's the plan now? Because my... n- now you're now you're doing uh, news reads for the, for the no. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're not really doing anything with Achievement Hunter anymore. You have oh. it for a long time. If any, if one more person asks me, when are you going to be on an Achievement Hunter episode? I'm like, I left that com- I left that branch. I am not an Achievement Hunter. I'm not associated with or on it. I am just part of the no. Not happening. And what's, yes. the, what's the plan going forward? Um, I have been doing a lot of cosplay-focused work and um, modeling-focused work. And You're making a lot of appearances lately. Yeah. Like uh, doing cons and stuff. It's what I'm passionate about because meeting fans and meeting people that enjoy my work and that want to talk and get to know me as a person is what I'm super passionate about and um, my dad kind of spilled the beans on RuPaul's Drag Race or like on RuPaul's podcast but I am planning on uh, actually putting my degree to use and uh, degree being a BFA in acting acting yes I I spent I listen once you take that that class that just you that breaks you in that conservatory program, um, for me it was Chekhov. We were doing, it was a whole semester just on Chekhov and my professor was one of those people who's like, I want you to fucking slap your scene partner in the face, make out with them and sob. I want you to feel it. That, so that was that for a semester. Oh, wow. it, was, it was very intense. Um, and the whole point of Chekhov is that Chekhov mimics real life. So it was really interesting because the scene that I was assigned for my final with my scene partner, mimicked a romantic situation I was going through at the time in college. Oh, really? And I remember my professor kept saying that I wasn't being truthful. I was It wasn't truthful acting. It was very fake. And this is sophomore year. Sophomore year is uh, usually in conservatory programs for BFA. It's a four-step program. You get in. You, hundreds of thousands uh, apply. Only 14 got into this program. Um, and a little note that I always say is I, I applied under a different name and without my dad because I wanted to prove that I was a good enough actor. So I was completely unassociated with him when I applied for this program. And so the first year you learn your habits and they make you think that you're a good actor because you got into the program, you're amazing, you're incredible. Second year, they break you. They, you think you're a piece of shit, you'll never get jobs. Which most artists horrible. are pretty, feel that way oh, internally yeah. anyway. Oh yeah, so they, they make you like really feel that you were shit and that you were the worst. Got him? Got him. Did I get him? Got an achievement I got him, Slade, yes. That asshole is down. That took forever. Yep, hate him. Uh, third year, you build up your new habits. Better habits. Okay. Better actor. Fourth year, business. So in our conservatory program, at the end of your fourth year, you have a showcase you go to Chicago, New York, and L.A., perform in front of agents, whatever, whatever. Never had a chance to do that because when I got hired, Matt was like, we needed you here yesterday. And I was like, oh, okay. Matt Holm. Yes. So I, I moved out. Oh, I'll just take this then. Hey, dragon. That's the guy who's been chasing you for. Yep. You want this egg? You're talking to me, the dragon. <laughs> oh no, the dragon. Oh shit! I thought uh, I was. I'm, I thought I was leaving. I'm good. I'm not on leaving. Eggs. I'm not leaving. Oh, he, I thought I was. I thought Do you I have was. A teleport thing. I thought I was teleporting out, and I just stood there, and now he's fighting me. I did a dumb. I did a very dumb. You knew I. Oh, goodbye. what's this? Goodbye. Goodbye. Is that a? Are you getting away? Yep. I'm safe. Oh, uh, that is not okay. It's I was going to suspend my disbelief <laughs> on that one. <laughs> that was too much. Although I've been playing uh, Shadow of War lately. Oh, okay. And you can, you can so, do the same thing. Yeah. You can like jump from any height, which um, is nice. I mean, I'm playing a video game. I don't necessarily want gravity damage for right. God's sake. That was amazing. I'm very happy that that happened. But yeah, so... But um, I can draw correlations between that and your experience at Rooster Teeth. Oh, yeah. Where um, I think a lot of people, too, I think a, a lot of people associate your first appearance as being that off-topic appearance. Not at all. 
You had done nope. a number of guest appearances with Achievement Hunter. I have been, if you want to count, quote unquote, me working here, I've been working here for four years. Yeah, really? Yep. You mean with guest appearances and things like mm -hmm. that as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, when, when you say Matt called you, it's because it, it, took, we had... it was the official hiring. Yeah. That he, because it was the second, third extra life that I did that I, because I remember Matt emailed me and was like, are you coming out to Extra Life? And I was like, oh, well, I didn't know if I was invited. And he's like, no, you're coming out to Extra Life. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, and then he was like, oh, I also want to have a meeting with you. Can you get down here a day earlier? Yeah. It's like, okay, sure. And I thought it was just like one of those, because Matt loves to, used to have those meetings with me that was just like, how's life? Just like <laughs> a check-in. And I was like, fine. I don't even work here. Why are we having this meeting? Um, so I thought it was just one of those. And he was just like, yeah, no, uh, we want to we wanna offer you a job here. And I was like, oh, that's what? What? So that was a really cool, like, iconic Extra Life moment for me. Um, but yeah, no, I, I... What's been your favorite part of working at Rooster Teeth? Honestly, it's the work... Just the fact that this is a working company, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Like, I don't know how to put it into words. It's like, I have the moment sometimes where I'm sitting here and I hear, like, Gus the dog, not Gus Sorola, yeah. uh, barking, and I... I hear like on the spot going and then I'm like Which is going on in the background right now. Right. And then I'm like sitting talking to my coworkers about Monster Hunter and we're like sending memes on Slack and I'm like, I get paid for this. Yeah. Like I'm I'm here working this job and and I get paid for this. And that's I think that's the best part about working here is that this is such a cool environment and I have I've made a lot of good friends. Like Ryan and I had a really cool, like, catch-up talk over by the kitchen a few weeks ago, and I just remember thinking, I'm so happy that Ryan's my friend. Mm -hmm. You know, every time I go out to to dinner with Gavin or something, I'm always just like, I'm so happy that I've met these people. Like, I have definitely become a better person and a, a wiser, stronger person because of a lot of people in this building currently. And there are people that, like, even though they've, you know, Aaron only does voice acting and now for Rooster Teeth, but Aaron and I are so close. Mm -hmm. And I remember throwback to like two, three years ago, I remember getting wasted and staying over at her apartment and we barely knew each other. Yeah. You know, and it's like, stuff? it's yeah. stuff like that that just kind of makes me smile. I think that's the best part about working here is that I have good memories with good people. Yeah, and the you know it's one of the things too. It's it's it, t talking about the transition thing as well. Is I I think at some point, I think at some point we'll reach that level where we have people who work here who are just actors and actresses. I want to say just. I mean mm -hmm. that's what they do exclusively. Right. Um. You know, and it's just we've never had anything like that. Like we have relationships with people like Aaron mm -hmm. and you know Kara who are in. Uh, Ruby and don't work at the company. Kara once worked here, but doesn't. Right. But then people like Jen Taylor, right. Shannon McCormick, Tom right. Booker, a lot of people we work with on a Kirk Johnson, a lot exactly. of people that are actors that we work with on a regular basis, but that don't work at the company. Which I feel like, like I said, getting rounding back to what we started talking about, spoilers, my dad kind of spilled the beans on a podcast. Um, I am planning on putting my degree to use and going to LA and doing what I want. I been dreaming of doing for years which is acting mm -hmm. and on film and, and television and um actually what's a, what's a dream role like what would be dream role obviously you have a very that, daenerys thing going on right now i do i do um which i have to fun Great. fun fact i have to get rid of it in about eight days because i have a secret thing that i may have gotten hired for that i can't quite talk about yet oh do i know what it is no, you don't. I'll tell oh, you really? after the it's podcast. It's a different thing than what I know. Mm -hmm. It's a different thing than what you know. Um, but because of that, I have to uh, be normal and look normal. <laughs> Wait, we should point out, she has white hair. Like yes. Like lavender hair. <laughs> right I now. have lavender white hair right now, which is very not conducive for the project that I am going to be Doesn't fit on. all roles. No, not at all. So... How long does it take to do that? It is actually a uh, full lace wig. Oh, really? Yeah, you can't tell because it's full lace, so it looks exactly like my hair. But it took hours to put on because it's, like, glued down. Right. It's, like, special you might as weight well, glue. Yeah, it looks right. like my hair, and I can do anything I want with it. But um, I'm going back to, like, my long 
So you're saying I can do that? Hair. Yeah, you can. I could. You could 100% have they the might not hair. make wigs in my size head, though. I oh, they absolutely do. If they make head. it in my tiny size, they make it in your size. Ashley's got a tiny head, too. Really? Oh, she puts on my hat. It looks like she looks like a kid That's... wearing a construction helmet. When Jerry always steals my hats, she has to, like, open it up three sizes, and she's like, what is wrong with you? That's weird, right? That people it's... have such different size heads? It's so weird. It's also weird that, like, I was about to say my girlfriend's about the same size as me. Like, no, she's fucking way taller than me and way more built than me. I, like, God, she, she, she's so buff. Excuse me while I just gush about my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> How old you guys been dating? A year, April 13th. Is that true? You guys aren't even at a year yet? I know, it seems crazy. No, yeah, it just seems like, especially... Well, it's because we've been, like, heavily publicly flirting online for over a year. Oh, yeah, right? Yeah, we, like, she was... She started seducing me online way before we started like officially dating. So if you want any tips and tricks, what were the Twitter? Twitter. I shit you not. Go back and read the history. Like, um, actually for Valentine's Day, I gave her uh, a framed picture of our first tweets to each other, which is so gross. That's, yeah, that's, it's I, so listen, gay. I, 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 it's listen. so gay. I, I know <laughs> my first tweet to Ashley, so I, you know, oh, God. I'm in the same boat. I know it. I don't have it framed. Okay. I might have a screenshot. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I, I, uh, I screenshotted our first Twitter exchange because it's, since she's a cosplayer, uh, our, you actually know her, Sonia. Mm -hmm. She was over in uh, West Virginia when she used to live there, uh, hang out with Jerry, and she knew that I like was kind of single and lonely, and, and Jerry was totally my type, and apparently Jerry had been crushing on me, and Sonia was like, just just reach out to her. Just, just tweet at her. Just, you know, do your whole princely routine. She'll fall for it in a second. And she did, and I did. I'm very predictable. Jerry was very suave and smooth, and I was like, and I remember I messaged Sonia, I was like, there's no way this girl is A, interested in girls, and B, single. And Sonia's like, yes and yes, go for it. Go for it, yeah. I mean, that's I've always thought that would be the toughest part of any same-sex relationship. And it's gotten easier, I think, over time. Mm -hmm. But the hard part would just be figuring out who's interested, oh, who's God, not. The worst like, time who's not straight, essentially. Was when I was in uh, like high middle school and the whole like hipster phase was happening and uh -huh. everybody was wearing plaid. And plaid <laughs> used to be a beacon of the gays. And I was like, are you into girls or are you just a hipster? I genuinely cannot tell. Right. And it was frustrating. But now like everybody's super loosey-goosey with gender and dating that like, I don't know. I feel like it's so much easier if you're newly coming out to find someone. Yeah, and it's like, the, I mean, a lot of times it's like people have historically made fun of people in same-sex relationships mm -hmm. uh, for having a specific way of talking, like right. a manner of speech, and yep. then a, a look as well. Right. But how else? You gotta have something. You gotta have a beacon. Yeah. But at this, but now in this, like, people are calling 2018 20 gay teen. Like, I feel like there's less of a beacon now, and now it's like in people's Twitter profiles, like. It's so out there. What's all the butt-eating stuff that's gotten big lately? What's going on That's there? anime. Anime is a mistake. <laughs> Fucking just memeing motherfuckers, like, eating ass, running fast. <laughs> like, I, listen, it's not even strictly a gay thing. It's just a meme No, I know. Thing. I yeah, know. No one knows anymore. It's just, like, it's interesting that it's become the meme level, you right? know? Right? Like, if you're Sonic, you gotta run fast, gotta eat ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> That's the big mood of 2018. But, um, no, I do make fun of me and Jerry, though, because I always joke that we're, like, the stereotypical butch and lipstick lesbian. Oh, yeah? Um, because, like, when we wind down for the night, like, I put on, I, like, put my hair in a high pony and, like, wear my frilly pink shorts, and she puts on, like, her sports bra and her, and her, like, joggers, and we just look at each other and we're like, oh, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, like, try not to be stereotypes, but, like, at the always open party, she was wearing like a button down with a tie and I was wearing like a short black dress and we matched and I was like, we are such stereotypes, like holy shit. Yeah, but it's one of the things, it's like live your life the way you want oh, to. Oh yeah, no. And, and a stereotype is, is still an outward thing Absolutely. of how people judge other people. It's like, if you want to live that way, live but your life But that's the thing, that we love it. Like, God, we... don't spend your life figuring out how other people want oh, to live. Oh no, we love being the, the princely type and the princess type. It just, it, we fit so well together mm -hmm. that it's just fun that we can make fun of ourselves, you know? Like, if anyone else was like, oh, the fucking butch and lipstick lesbian, we'd be like, go fuck yourself. 
but we can say it to ourselves because, you know, we're joking. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Um, you killed the great Jagras. Yes. You got he, 30 points for that. I feel like you should get way more. I don't know how much 30 points he's is. He's the level one monster. He's a he's he's bullshit. That he, took like he's small time. Four minutes though. Because he's the level one monster. I know, but it's four minutes. Like, oh, the time limit is 50 per monster. Oh, really? Yeah. Some 50 minutes? Minutes. Get out of here. I what happens at 50 minutes? It, like, at 50 minutes is like. Turns into a butterfly? You suck. Uh, I got it. Start well, over. That, that other one was flying around. Yeah. Yeah, like in Mordor, um, when I'm playing it, it's just like there's a thousand enemies around you. It's just stab, stab, yep. stab, 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 stab. That's why I do other things when I play Monster Hunter because. Um, so you go treadmill game. It is. A, it's a great treadmill game. Yep. Um, I hope to have that set up in the next apartment. It's the greatest. It's the greatest. I was playing Shadow of Mordor the other day. Mm -hmm. I literally walked nine miles. Exa like, it's. I, uh, it I, just makes me feel like not like when I see the forty-five hour counter. Exactly. Now it's probably forty-seven. Uh, when, <laughs> when you see that counter, it's like I'm like, Ugh. or God, if I see my PUBG one, oh, I don't want to talk about it. I know all those hours are sat in my computer chair. Yep, that's my Final Fantasy hours. I'm at hour one oh seven. What do you do to stay fit? Uh, because I'd be young. <laughs> I uh, usually so I eat really clean now because I you'll probably remember I went on that crazy. Uh, health kick. Yeah, I, man. Yeah, I went, I changed. I look like a totally different person when I look at pictures of myself from like last year. Mm -hmm. um, but I was very unhealthy when I first started losing weight. I was like only eating like a tiny little cube of chicken that's and veggies. That's what's, yeah. And then I ran five miles after work every day. I did the same thing when I dropped all my weight. It's just like yep. I just, I didn't work out or anything. And I just like, you just lose everything. Yeah. Yeah. But I did work out. Like, um, but it was only cardio. Right. Um, but now that I'm like, I've gotten to a place where I'm okay with, I maintain it by like, I'll run three miles every other day. Yeah. Um, Jerry really wants me to start lifting, but I'm a noodle and I can't lift anything and I'm a wimp. But she's Tell like, you're the princess. You know, that's, 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 thank you, Bernie. Princesses don't lift. That's what I said. I said, this is what you're here for. You open my jars. You lift things. You're the tallest. Job security. Yeah. Like, you want to stay here? Open my jars. <laughs> that is how this works. And she's like, no, you literally, like, even my dad started making fun of me because it's like, you can't take your suitcase up the stairs of our house anymore. And I was like, yeah, but like when Jerry and I live together, I won't have to. <laughs> so you guys can live together? Yeah, we're moving in in LA together. That's a big step. Yeah, so you're gonna have to choose. That seems yep. about, I think I'd, uh, listen, I was never one to really, I can't judge what anybody does because <laughs> I, I went after I got divorced, I was 38. Right. It was literally, literally the first time I'd ever lived alone. Really? 38. See, this is the first time I've ever been in like a serious, not first serious relationship, but like, I was, I actually had this Well, that's another stereotype about lesbians. Right. They move in together, like on the third date. Right. Like, um, I actually had this great, beautiful conversation with uh, Anna. Um, we went to ramen together and we had our like, semi-monthly catch up. Who's this? Anna Hullum. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, she was saying like, look, it's not silly to say when you know, you know. That's not, it's not at all. Cause like, I always felt like, I felt weird thinking because just recently we've kind of started joking about like engagement and marriage, like joking but not joking. You're not joking. No, not joking at all. Like that's the right. thing is like we're kind of like, oh holy shit, is this? Wait, we both feel the same way about the long haul. Mm -hmm. Oh god, but we're both on the same page. Oh no, this seems kind of pretty serious, and I've never felt like that. Like I've definitely been in love before. Yeah. But this is like, I can't see myself with anybody else. Like I definitely see myself with Jerry. For fucking ever. Um, I know what you mean. It's like when you, when, you, when you find someone you know, and when you know, yeah. you know. It's, it's really, yeah. honestly, I think it's the greatest thing. Yeah. I mean, it is. A, I've had a very fortunate life and life, love my job, my career, and mm -hmm. art, and stuff like that. But man, it's just like being being with someone you're in love with is like, it's really nothing else compares to. There it. really isn't. Like, I don't. Oh, oh, hi. Hi, assholes. Please die. Um, like I said, I've, I've definitely loved other relationships and like been in love and been like oh this is very lovely we, we've been together for a long time this is cool but my relationship with jerry is just one of those like yeah no she's gonna be my wife <laughs> like i i can't i don't know i've never i've I always, I, I'm gonna I kind send her of, this right. Here. Please, please. please. <laughs> oh, she she knows. I was like, I'm I'm doing this thing that's just talking, and she's like, You're gonna get gay, aren't you? I'm like, You know I'm gonna get gay. <laughs> you know I'm gonna get gay. Like the reason that I love taking her with me to cons is because she sits at my table and sells for me, like sells my prints, 
And all she does is she's like, hey, do you want a picture of my beautiful girlfriend? Hey, I love my girlfriend. And I'm like... By the way... Yeah? Very, very, very important part yeah. of the cosplay industry. Yeah. And I'm not saying you're making your appearances strictly for cosplay. Yeah. But the unsung partner oh. who is there all the time and helping with cosplay... Hats off round of applause yeah, to man. every unsung partner. And that's the best thing about Jerry. She's a cosplayer as well. Mm-hmm. So she understands acutely what's going on. Like, we love doing cons together because we can do couples cosplay. Oh, that's awesome. And then, at the same time, when I'm like, babe, I gotta work, she's like, tell me what you need to do. Do you need me to get you water? Do you need me to get you a snack? I got you. What do you need? Awesome. At RTX, she walked around with a rolling bag filled with Powerade, protein shakes, snacks, bars, and Disney Princess Band-Aids and Star Wars Band-Aids just in case I wasn't in the Disney Princess mood. Okay. I said I was going to send this to her. I'm actually going to send it to Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> Look how much she loves her. It was honestly one of the greatest experiences because, like, she was just going to come to RTX because it was my birthday and, you know, we were going to... I'm just going to kill you. And Ashley will just tell me, good, get your rolling suitcase with your Powerade. Right, um, exactly. Follow me around. Um, but it was just... It's so nice that not only is she a cosplayer and we can experience the cons together, but she doesn't... Not only that she doesn't mind, she enjoys being helpful and I enjoy taking care of her. We enjoy taking care of each other and I think that that's why we work so well together. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm super gross and in love and it's such a great feeling to be super gross and in love. Yeah. And, and just want to spend your life with somebody and like want to, I, you know, I've always wanted to travel and I've always wanted to see the world. Like India is one of my dream destinations. So um, I want to really badly, like... Get him, gremlin! <laughs> I want to put on a sari and, like, experience it culturally and everything. Like, that's one of my dream, dream destinations. And now that there's someone that I want to share it with, you know? I've always wanted to go to Paris because it's gorgeous. It's Paris. But I want to go to Paris with Cherry. We're planning a trip to Japan for a month. It's a great line from When Harry Met Sally. You know that movie? Yes, I do. When he says that when you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with someone, Mm -hmm. you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. That that is the most accurate thing. (laughs) Yeah. I have never related to something harder in my life, Bernie. I will tell you that. Because, like, every day I wake up, I'm like, can I please just move in with her and start doing stuff and living her life? And, like, my dream that I have sometimes, like just my daydream, is like waking up next to her on a Sunday morning and going to a farmer's market and our dog's at the end of our bed and we have like a lazy day in. Mm -hmm. Just that, that's all I want. I just want, and being long distance for a year is tough. Well, that's gonna change. I mean, you've got so much much stuff coming up that's about to change. Oh yeah. You're moving to LA. Yep. You're literally about to start the rest of your life. Yep, I'm, and I think that this, this makes moments of you know, I told, I said earlier, the dangerous assault, the off-topic NyQuil guzzling. That makes all of, like, she makes that worth it. I'm really sorry that happened. Yeah, yeah well, when you are a fragile human being and a bunch of people are coming at you hard mm-hmm. and saying that you are worthless and you're useless and that you're stupid and that you should have never spoke and that why don't you just go die and, and seemingly not able to let go of it yeah like, not, not able to get past it it's yeah. been almost two years my dudes yeah. uh i'm a different person i really thought you should be too well for this for this <laughs> portion of your life how would you say working at rashid in austin what good experience yep it was a good experience you'd say i would say that it was a learning experience Got it. I would say that I've had a lot of great experiences here. Like, every time I think about Extra Life, I just, it puts a smile on my face, no matter what Extra Life it is. Extra Life has always been amazing. Hosting E3 is something that I tear up every time I think about it. That's such, like, I, I used to go to E3 mm-hmm. by badge swapping and, and sneaking in under my dad's friends' names. Yep. And then I hosted it. Yep. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. That's so phenomenal. You know, that was an incredible experience. I sat down with Deej, and now we're friends because we were like, I interviewed him through E3. Like, yeah, that was so cool, you know? And and like I said, all the friends that I've met, the fact that I'm sitting here even doing this, like, this is my job, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm playing a game that I love talking to you. That's phenomenal. Yeah, there were some downs. Not gonna lie. Well, like we said earlier... <laughs> 
nobody's life is perfect. Nobody's and that applies to Rooster Teeth. 100%. I, you know, sometimes because what we do, we try to make it look fun and light and easy. Yep. Is It's not all that. It really isn't. And it might look 100%. that way from the outside. Right. But making our jobs look easy uh, is part of our job. I think that that is the best takeaway from this is that, because I think I've, I've noticed that a lot with people who, you know, are very passionate about their stances. It always comes from a sense of definitively thinking that what they see is real. Yeah. And like I said, I love my internet persona of being just super perky, positivity, out the ass, you know, support no matter what. But, like, my friends and, and close friends and family know I'm a, I'm a very... I'm a very fragile piece of person. And so is everybody. And it's like, but that's me. That's that's the real Mika. And the real Mika is there under the big titted anime gifts and the Kigurumis and the cosplay. And, and the giant swords and, and monsters. And the giant swords and monsters. And I feel like that's a lesson that a lot of people should just take to heart is that there's a person under everyone. And you know, you don't you just we never know. And obviously, it's not black and white. There's shades of gray in every person. Some people, I don't know, you can't break through to. But I like to, I just like to remember that even people who insult me or say something mean or the dude a few weeks ago who, like, intimidated me on the street. Really? Oh, I mean, like, people think, oh, people don't actually call you the N-word, right? Like, and I'm like, no, no, no. Like, literally, if you're alone... Sometimes it just happens. And it's like, I don't know, it's just a reality that I accepted. And I'm like, okay, so that dude has some issues. Never going to be his friend. Not going to try and find the humanity in him. But I'm sure, like, say he's a, he's a dad. I'm sure he, you know, makes his son happy. There's a redeeming quality in him. He Good may gosh. have... But you know what I mean? He's not a dad. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It's like, I mean, I hope he's not a dad and... Oh, that looks scary. I hope he's not spewing these ideals to another generation, but... Maybe he's a really good brother. Maybe he bought a bouquet of flowers for his wife yesterday and made her happy. Doesn't mean that it makes what he said any better. Mm -hmm. But he is a person. People are people. And even though there are a lot of people in this world that I do not agree with, how they think, how they feel, how they feel about me, they are still people. I never wish harm or death or wrongdoings upon anyone because those people have people that love them and people that they love and I don't know I just feel like if we all remember that everybody this world could be I mean which kind of gets back to the world peace but like I don't know I feel like if everybody just remembered that like we're humans it could be a little bit easier 